The Ned Rig and the Drop Shot, two excellent finesse presentations. But how do we know when to use one or the other? Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. This week, we're going to be talking about these two excellent presentations, the Ned Rig and the Drop Shot. And if you're anything like me, you tend to fall into patterns. Well, I caught fish on a Ned Rig three days ago and two days ago, so I'm gonna start off with a Ned Rig today, even maybe when it's not the best option out there. So we're gonna be talking about the strengths of each and how you can determine what to use on a particular day to put more fish in the boat. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first one we're gonna discuss is the Ned Rig and the types of conditions that I look for when throwing this particular bait. The first thing is if it's a very high barometric pressure day, a bluebird day, lots of blue skies, not much wind, your traditional bottom fishing type of a situation. When that barometric pressure is high, it pushes all of the, the microplankton, the zooplankton, all that stuff down to the bottom and the food chain is on the bottom of the lake or river. That is an ideal situation for a Ned Rig. Also when the sun is extremely high in the sky, it pushes those fish down and drives them into shade or the depth. So those are great situations for a Ned Rig. Now, as far as barometric pressure, there's a couple things that you can do. You know, of course, go ahead and read a barometer, look on your weather app. But a, a friend of mine that I had fished with many years ago down in Tennessee had taught me to look at sticks in the water. If you've got a floating stick in the water, it's either going to be vertical or horizontal like this, and that changes with the barometric pressure. When that pressure is high, that stick is most likely gonna be a vertical position pushing things down. When the barometric pressure is low, that stick is gonna be laying more horizontal in the water, and believe it or not, I have seen some huge sticks, three, four feet long, that are pushed straight down vertical in the water. So next time you're out on the lake, go ahead and take a look at that, and I think you'll be surprised how accurate that particular method is. I use it all the time. During the day, that barometric pressure might change a little bit and those sticks change position from vertical to horizontal. That means that food chain is starting to move up in the water column. So keep an eye on that and I think you'll be surprised. The next thing that I look for for perfect Ned Rig conditions is if I have a really clean lake bed or river bed. If I've just got some gravel, pebbles, you know, even some muck, if I've got a fairly clean bottom structure, that means a Ned Rig is going to be a good choice. Um, it really started off in a lot of the Ozark lakes. Well, most of them are highland reservoirs that have extremely rocky structure to them. If you've got a lake with some weeds, some tall sand grass, that Ned Rig is going to get buried up down in there and may not always be seen by the bass. So a clean bottom composition is the next thing that I look for in a Ned Rig. And that bottom composition will change throughout the fishing season as vegetation grows or dies off. If you've got a lot of current washing over an area, that bottom composition is going to be different. The next thing that I look for is if I'm going to be fishing around a lot of docks and docks that are pretty clean as far as they don't have big brush piles on them and that type of stuff. I like to take that Ned Rig and go ahead and flip it or pitch it back along those docks. It's just a really great lure, finesse lure to use around docks and more open water, clean bottom composition. So those are the three that I really look for when fishing the Ned Rig is if there's a lot of pressure, high barometric pressure, a bluebird day, and that food chain is down near the bottom. If I've got a relatively clean lake or riverbed structure, not much vegetation, and if it's really calling for a finesse presentation and there's a lot of docks, I like to use a Ned Rig. So those are the kind of the criteria I think about as far as which one am I going to use today, Ned Rig or a drop shot. Now let's talk about the drop shot as far as what types of conditions will make me throw this one over a Ned Rig. 
The first is if I plan on fishing vertically. Let's say I'm marking a lot of fish on my graph up on the bow and I've got fish suspended. The drop shot is so nice because I can just drop right down there to them and hold that bait at whatever depth I'm trying to target. You can do the same thing with a Ned Rig, but I feel that the drop shot is a much more efficient way to vertically fish when you have bass that are suspended. The next thing is there a lot of vegetation. Am I fishing a lake or river that that growth is really starting to come up? If those weeds are two, three, four, five feet or, or sometimes more in height, a nedrig is going to get all buried up in that type of stuff unless you can find some open pockets to go ahead and flip it into. But if you've got tall vegetation, drop shot is a great choice. You can put that cylinder weight on there and just let that weight run through the tops of that vegetation and then your lure is going to be suspended just above it. Very effective method for covering a lot of water and pulling those bass out of that cover. So if I've got some thick weeds, a drop shot is definitely my go-to over a Ned Rig. I also prefer to use a drop shot if I have a forage base that's a little bit larger. If I've got yellow perch or some gizzard shad or, or you know bigger bluegills, I will probably use a drop shot over a Ned Rig because I want that larger bait profile. So depending on the forage that they're feeding on, that's another reason I might pick the drop shot over the Ned Rig. Now you can put some larger lures on the Ned Rig, but I just feel I'm more effective with a larger soft plastic on my drop shot rig. The drop shot is also an excellent choice when the days are a little bit windier because you can use the power shot where you've got those weights that are a half ounce, three quarters of an ounce, or even up to one ounce. So that power shot method of rigging a drop shot is super nice when there's a lot of wind on the water and you need to cover water to try to locate fish. So those are kind of the criteria that I use for choosing a drop shot. If I've got suspended bass, if I've got really thick vegetation, if my forage base is a little bit larger, or if it's windy out and I need to cover some water with a power shot method, all of those will make me put down the Ned Rig and pick up the drop shot. Now, with that said, these two presentations, these two rigs are great follow-ups for each other. So if I miss a fish on a drop shot and they don't want to hit that again, I go ahead and throw that Ned Rig in there and it's going to give them just a slightly different look. Vice versa, if I'm fishing a Ned Rig and, and I get a strike and it misses, I could follow it up with a drop shot. So they do follow each other up nicely, but there's definitely certain conditions and criteria where one works better over the other, no doubt about that. I hope that this particular video has been helpful for you. Um, I've had a lot of people talking to me about the power shot method, so I'll go ahead and link to it right here, and you can click on that if you like. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life.